Okay, 3.2, solving linear systems algebraically. Okay, so solving linear equations algebraically. Here's what I do. Now, for some of you, many, many ways you can solve this. There really are. There really is truly many ways that you can solve these problems, but this is what I tell you to do because it works every single way. It's easy to remember because you just do it one simple way. So here's what I want you to do. Put giant parentheses around both items. Giant parentheses. Check. This is like a one right here. Whatever's on top, put it on the bottom. Whatever's on the bottom, put the opposite on top and then multiply them through. What I mean is now you have negative three times one, so you have negative three x. You have negative three times negative two, which is positive six y. Negative three times one, which is negative three. Down below, one times three x is three x. One times y is positive one y. One times negative eighteen is negative eighteen. Negative three, because we're going to add these now when you add them together. Negative three and three, cross out. Six and one is seven y, and we end up getting negative twenty one. So to solve this, you would just divide both sides by seven you get y equals negative 3. From this point you can just plug in whichever equation you want. I'm going to plug it into the bottom. 3x, I'm going to put minus 3 equals negative 18 instead of the y. I add 3 to both sides so I get 3x equals negative 15. Divide both sides by 3 and I get x equals negative 5 and there is your answers. So you would write that as negative 5, negative 3. Can you solve this a different way? Yeah, if you wanted to, I could have just multiplied the bottom by negative, or positive 2. The y's would have crossed out to get my answers. Okay, yeah, that works fine. But doing it this way is an easier way to remember instead of trying to get stuff to cancel out all the time. So however you want to do it, however you wish to get things to cancel out, is completely fine by me. So according to my method, the top is a 1, so I multiply the bottom by 1. The top is a negative 3, so I multiply the top by 3. 3 times 1 is 3x. 3 times 2 is positive 6y. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3x. 1 times y is positive 1y. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. I add these together, the x's cancel out, I end up getting 7y equals negative 28. Divide both sides by 7, y equals negative 4. I'm going to plug it into the bottom, get negative 3x minus 4 equals negative 10. I add 4 to both sides, I get negative 3x equals negative 6. Divide by negative 3 on both sides, we get x equals 2, so you get 2, negative 4 as your answer to that problem. Um, this one, you know, it would be really simple for this one. Just multiply one of them by a negative to get it to cancel out. So I'm going to multiply the top by a negative. Why? Because that gives me a negative 3x, positive 2y, and a negative 13. Why nothing to the bottom? Because look, it's a 3x plus y and a negative 2. These already cancel out then when I add them. So I have a 3y equals negative 15. I divide both sides by 3 and I get y equals negative 5. So if I plug that in here, 3x minus 5 equals negative 2. If I add 5 to both sides, I get 3x equals 3. Divide both sides by 3, x equals 1. So I get 1 negative 5 as a group solution. This method you can just use substitution. If this is what y is, take this and plug it in for y. So 3x plus 3 times negative x equals negative 1. So we get 3x minus 3x equals negative 1. You get 0 equals negative 1. That makes absolutely no sense. Since that makes absolutely no sense, what do you think the answer is? No solution is what the answer is because it makes no sense. 
no solution is correct because it makes absolutely no sense. Taking a look here, since they both equal y, set them equal to each other. Negative 4x plus 4 equals negative x minus 5. So I'll add x to get all the x's on this side. So I get negative 3x plus 4 equals negative 5. Then I subtract 4 on both sides to get all the numbers on this side. So I get negative 3x equals negative 9. Divide both sides by a negative 3, and I get x equals 3. So to find out what my answer is, just plug it in. So I'll plug it in here. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8, so that's what y is. So your official answer is 3, negative 8. Um, to solve this one, just do the method like I said, the very first method. Take whatever's on the bottom, multiply it. Whatever is on the uh, sorry, whatever's on the top, multiply it by the bottom. Whatever's on the bottom, take the opposite. So negative three times four is negative twelve x. Negative three times negative three is positive nine y. Negative three times negative one is positive three. On the bottom, four times three is positive twelve x. Four times four is positive sixteen y. Four times negative three is negative twelve. The twelves cancel out. I get a 25y equals uh, 3 minus 12, and we get a negative 9. So when you go to solve this, you divide both sides by 25. And when you do that, you end up getting y equals negative 9 over 25. Now, you take that and you plug it in and you can find your answer. That will take forever. Honestly, that will take forever. So here's my recommendation. You got the x's to cancel out because you swapped them, right? Because you swapped them, you got the x's to cancel out. So now, instead of swapping the x's, right? Instead of swapping the x's, swap the y's. Who wants to plug that fraction in? So what I mean by this is, do this again. But take whatever's in front of the y and move it down. Take whatever's in front of the y down here and move it up, but take the opposite. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16x. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12y. Negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. Negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 9x. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12y. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Now the y's cancel out. I get negative 25x equals 13. Divide both sides by negative 25. And I figure out that x is 13 over negative 25. So you get your official answer to be negative 13 over 25 and negative 9 over 25. Much easier than simplifying and plugging all that junk in. So, um, now that you understand how to plug those all in, if I get some extra time here, I will finish these um, word problems for you.